Hey what's up guys, welcome to my complete Sayu guide. So as you know, Sayu came out a few days ago, and I've been loving her ever since. She's one of the most fun support characters I've ever played, has many different ways to play her, and can literally roll around everywhere, great for exploration and combat. There's a lot of confusion regarding Sayu since she is a pretty complicated character, so in this video I want to clear everything up and tell you guys everything you need to know about this character in one video. We're going to be covering how to play her, how to build her, her teams, and a showcase as well, so that I can help you guys build your Sayu and play her optimally. So with that being said, I want to keep the intro short. If you guys don't know, I stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested, I'm going to be doing a birthday stream soon, and also be sure to subscribe if you're new because it does mean a lot. With that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to do in this video is go over how to play Sayu and talk about her kit because she is a very unique character and can be pretty complicated if you don't know what you're doing. The very first thing I want to say, uh, and to clear up misconceptions, is how she heals. She heals off of attack percent and elemental mastery in different ways. So her burst is the ability that heals, and if you don't know, this ability summons a Daruma that sort of sits on the ground, has a giant field around him, which will constantly constantly damage opponents and heal your characters. This healing scales off of your attack, so you know, the more attack you have the more you'll heal, and obviously stuff like a healing bonus circlet can help, but you also heal based off your elemental mastery with a passive Sayu has that heals you every time you swirl. Because of that there are a few ways to build her and I'll talk about the optimal builds obviously in a little bit, but just do keep in mind that elemental mastery to not only buff your swirl but also heal you is oftentimes a good thing to do. As you can see every time Sayu triggers a swirl, she'll heal your characters by 300 HP and another 1.2 HP for every elemental mastery she has, which can definitely add up when you start having like hundreds of elemental mastery. And if you do have Sayu's Constellation 6, you will also heal additionally with elemental mastery, but we'll talk about that in another section. So with that out of the way, let's go back to her burst and talk about it. It actually has a lot of scalings. There's a lot of different things that this ability does. It does a first initial hit and heal, and then it summons a Daruma who will also damage and heal. The Daruma lasts for 12 seconds with a 20 second cooldown, and he's actually pretty strong because his range is big and he'll basically heal any active characters you have. If your characters are above 70% HP, it'll just start attacking and dealing anemo damage and swirling if there's any elements in contact with it. But if your active character has 70% or less HP, it will heal instead of dealing damage. Do keep in mind though that with your first constellation, sort of like Bennett's first one, if you're familiar with that, the Daruma will not only heal you past 70%, but he will actually ignore this completely and simultaneously attack and heal. But we will once again talk about this in the constellation section. Lastly, for your alt, your second passive, which you get after ascending past level 60, is another buff to that elemental burst, which gives your Daruma some AoE on its attacks and will heal nearby characters in your party. What that means is it'll heal your active party member, but it'll also heal your other party members for 20% of whatever it healed the initial or on-field character. So with the burst out of the way, we can actually talk about her skill now. I saved this for the end because this is more complicated and weird. It's honestly a very unique ability, so let's talk about it. First of all, I want to say that as you can see, this ability is really fun. If you hold it, you can just stay in like this ball, run around. Uh, it not only is it good for exploration, because it doesn't cost any stamina to use, but more importantly, it constantly does anemo damage, can generate some particles for you, and it can be good in certain team comps that play around it, like when it's paired with the Shang Ling's Pyronado. Although, usually this isn't how you're going to use Sayu's E, but in some team comps, again, uh, like the Shang Ling one, and like we'll see in the team comp section, holding it and running around can be nice. Generally speaking though, there's actually a more optimal way to use it that we're going to talk about. First of all, you should know that you can either press or hold this ability. The scaling on the, you know, all the damage that this ability gets varies based on whether you press or hold. As you can see, hold does a lot more damage, and this increases with talent levels. And on top of that, the cooldown of this ability does vary. When you press it or when you hold it for a very short duration, it'll have six second cooldown. And then for the longer you hold it, it the cooldown will increase all the way up to 11 seconds. Uh, and you can hold this, in case you're wondering, for a maximum of 10 seconds. And something you should know is that while you are in this wind wheel state, so when you're rolling around, especially if you're holding, you can infuse yourself with an element, uh, whatever you come in contact with, allowing you to proc reactions and swirl that specific element. Now, something you can do and what is usually optimal in most teams is actually what I call like a short hold, where you're holding it very briefly and basically immediately canceling it, which makes it seem like a press but it's actually a hold. What I mean is if you hold it very briefly you'll get the hold damage instead of the press damage and you'll potentially generate more particles making it better than just pressing it. As you guys can see if I were to just press it the cooldown will be six seconds I'll get two particles and I'll do you know a bit of damage. But if on the other hand you hold it very briefly like that and then let go you'll deal more damage and you can get more particles. As you saw I got three particles there and the reason for that is because when you're holding you actually gain particles when you run through enemies. As you can see uh, there's a particle that was generated right there. It's hard to show you guys, but basically holding does give you more particles and deals more damage. So when you want to press, when you're just trying to use your E to swirl or whatever, instead of just tapping it, you can just do like a mini hold like that, release it as soon as possible, 
uh, and it's usually more beneficial. Also, a bonus tip that I wanted to add is if you do choose to hold this ability, uh, you don't actually have to like hold your E button on your keyboard or whatever you're using, because as you can see, you hold it for a bit and then you can just let go uh, or like spin around, do whatever, but you basically can let go of the, the key and then just press it again whenever you want to cancel it. So that out of the way, for your talent priority, I highly recommend leveling your burst first, just because it increases your healing as well as your damage. So it's usually what I recommend to just increase your damage and make your Sayu a much more efficient healer. After that, you should level your skill. And obviously you don't really need to level your normal attacks unless you plan on running Sayu DPS. Lastly, I thought I should mention that her uh, passive talent is pretty funny. You can actually get crystal flies or other animals without scaring them away. Although keep in mind that once you get the first one, the others start flying away because I guess they notice that their friend is gone. So with that out of the way, we are now going to start talking about Sayu's builds and get into how to build her optimally. For your artifact sets, it's pretty straightforward. You really want the four piece Verdescent Venerer as with most Animo supports. If you don't know by now, this set is pretty broken. Uh, not only does it give you 15% Animo damage bonus, but it also increases your swirl damage by 60% and decreases the opponent's elemental resistance to whatever you swirl by 40%. This is especially huge when paired with an elemental carry, like a pyro or hydro user, because you can swirl that element, reduce the resistance of opponents, and buff your carry's damage. So this is pretty much the only set I recommend. Now, if you don't have a good four-piece Verdescent, you can do something like two Verdescent with two Wanders to get that AD Elemental Mastery. In a set like four-piece Noblesse Oblige, if you don't have any elements that you can swirl, let's say in a Shao team or in a Geo team, can also be a viable option. I also want to mention the Maiden's Beloved set, but I personally don't like this one as much as the others that I mentioned, because generally speaking, Sayu will heal enough, as long as you have good artifacts on her, to where you'd rather have an offensive set that buffs your damage instead of buffing your healing, but it is something I wanted to mention in case you're struggling and aren't healing enough. Now for Sayu's specific artifact stats, this is where things can actually get more complicated. First of all, her elemental burst, as you guys saw, costs 80 energy, which means you oftentimes need a lot of energy recharge to be able to spam this on cooldown. On top of that, while her abilities scale with attack percent and so does her healing from her burst, she also scales very well with elemental mastery because of this passive, increasing the healing you gain with your elemental mastery, and also since you swirl so much, and swirl, as you guys know, is a transformative reaction that scales off of your level and your elemental mastery. So what does that mean? Well, not only should you level your Sayu if you have the resources to, to increase your swirl damage, but you should also stack elemental mastery to increase your damage and your healing. While you can get more healing out of attack percent, elemental mastery is usually better because the damage you'll be dealing is way higher since swirl is just an amazing reaction. So for Sayu, what I usually recommend is stacking elemental mastery, but also having enough energy recharge to where you can spam your burst either on cooldown or as often as you need to, to heal your characters. So usually I look for energy recharge on my substats and elemental mastery on the main stats, but this can highly depend on you. And for your sands, while elemental mastery is usually the way to go, an energy recharge one can be viable as well because the energy recharge you need can be very high. Obviously, this depends on you and your team, but you can need up to 200% just to get your burst back on cooldown because realistically, you're only using your skill like two or three times with every burst, so it can be very hard to get your burst back. That being said, and we'll talk about weapons in the next section, but I personally prefer running Elemental Mastery on your main stats. So stacking Elemental Mastery on your Sands, Goblet, and Circlet, and then for energy recharge, you get that on your substats and also on your weapon with something like a Favonius Greatsword that has a great passive or one of the other ones that we'll talk about in the next section. Now, if you want your Sayu to heal more, something that I really like is running Elemental Mastery Sands and Goblet, but going for a healing bonus circlet because then you still keep a lot of the damage that you would have by stacking Elemental Mastery, but gain a very significant amount of healing with this circlet. This is what I believe is the more healer support build for Sayu that I really like, whereas a full Elemental Mastery build is more optimal and does more damage. So those are the two builds that I recommend, either Elemental Mastery on everything, or you can also run a healing bonus on the circlet. However, I do want to make it clear that energy recharge can be very needed, and if you don't have enough on your substats, running an energy recharge sands can be good as well. And just to be as thorough as possible, I want to add a bonus section talking about attack percent, because a lot of people think this is the best way to build Sayu before you hit her constellation 6, although usually, as I mentioned, elemental mastery and energy recharge are still more important, because elemental mastery on all your pieces will give you way more damage and attack percent when you consider the fact that you're mainly going for swirls, which is the biggest source of Sayu's damage. But you will get more healing from attack percent, so if all you care about is healing, and that's all you want, maybe like you're playing co-op or something, going for full attack percent is viable, but elemental mastery is usually just better. And if you do need more healing, as I mentioned multiple times already, a healing bonus circlet should be enough while still giving you enough elemental mastery to outweigh an attack build. So now what we're going to do is talk about Sayu's weapons, because there's a lot of good ones, and it can actually be confusing or overwhelming when you first look at it and which weapon you should choose. This highly depends on every player, so I'm going to try to be as comprehensive as possible in this section, so let's go. First of all, there's three main categories of claymores that are sort of viable on her. There's elemental mastery 
ones for more swirl damage, energy recharge ones for, you know, being able to spam your burst on cooldown, and there's some attack percent ones like Wolf Greystone that are also very good. So because of that, what do I recommend? Well, first of all, I want to say it highly depends on your artifact. If you have enough energy recharge just on your artifacts, running an energy recharge weapon can be overkill. On the other hand, if you're stacking elemental mastery on your artifacts like I am, running a weapon like Favonius or Sacrificial or any energy recharge sword can be essential for you to spam your burst uh, and heal your team. For the elemental mastery options, there's the Rain Slasher and actually a good three-star weapon as well, the Blood Tainted Greatsword, which seems bad, but has more elemental mastery than Rain Slasher, so it can actually give you more swirl damage than a Rain Slasher will because of more elemental mastery, but Rain Slasher does have a higher base attack. The problem with these weapons though is the effects are situational and generally speaking, I don't like them as much as an energy recharge weapon. So they definitely are viable and you can run them if you already have enough energy recharge or just want to stack elemental mastery. But personally, I prefer these energy recharge swords that we're going to talk about next. For a free to play option for energy recharge, there is this new claymore, which is on screen now. It's pretty good because you get energy recharge on the stat and the effect will not only increase your skill damage, but also regenerate energy. And the amount you regenerate depends on your refinement level. It can be quite high for your Sayu every time the passive procs. This is a great free to play option. However, I don't like it as much as some of the other four stars, especially when you get to refine those if you do get a couple copies. Those other four stars are Sacrificial Greatsword and Favonius Greatsword. Both of them, I believe, are very good. The Favonius Greatsword has a higher base attack and allows you to spam your skill even more. It basically gives you another charge of your skill if the passive procs. The Favonius Greatsword, which is what I tend to use, will give you less damage by having a lower base attack, right? 41 versus that 44 at level 1, but has a much higher energy recharge stat and generates white particles for your whole team. If you don't know, these white particles generate a pretty good amount of energy for every element. So this is very good, especially if you have other characters in your team that need energy. And, you know, they obviously help your Sayu as well. Do keep in mind that once again, at, like with Sacrificial Greatsword, the effect does get significantly better with refinement. And this weapon has the downside of sort of forcing you to build crit, at least on your substats or maybe on a circlet, so that you can proc this effect as often as possible. Now for the five star weapons, first of all, the Skyward Pride is pretty great because obviously it has a higher base attack than the four stars and gives you a lot of energy recharge, making it a very good option. Another pretty sick weapon is the Wolf's Gravestone, which has insane amounts of attack, right? It gives you almost 50% on top of a 600 base at level 90 and 20% from the passive, which will not only give you some damage on your abilities, but also increase your healing, which does scale off of attack. Lastly, the effect is the main reason you'd run this weapon and why it can actually be the best sometimes, because it buffs all your party members' attack by 40%, so all your off-field supports and your carry will get buffed for 12 seconds when you hit an opponent that's low HP. So I believe Wolf's Gravestone has the potential to be the best weapon on you, so long as you have, obviously, enough energy recharge on your uh, artifacts. Overall, though, there's some great weapons for every type of player. For whatever you're looking for, there's great elemental mastery options, great energy recharge options, and even some good 5 stars if you do have those. In terms of specific 4-star ranking, though, I usually recommend the energy recharge swords the most, so either Favonius or Sacrificial, and they are usually preference. Sacrificial can give you more damage with a higher base attack and a good effect, whereas Favonius will give you these white particles and more energy recharge, which I really like at high refinement and personally use. Now for Sayu, we're going to talk about her constellations, and these are actually really good. For a 4-star character, she has some impressively good constellations, however, I do want to say, since a lot of people always ask this, she is perfectly fine at constellation 0, so you can play her at C0. This is what I'm going to be using in this video. As you can see, I haven't activated any constellations, but they are really good. First of all, her constellation 1 is pretty amazing and reminds me of Bennett's constellation 1, which ignores the HP threshold on her burst and allows her burst, her Daruma, to attack and heal opponents at the same time. And so what this means is, you know, you'll deal damage while healing, and more importantly, this 70% healing that it'll do, right, it heals when you're under 70% HP, is no longer a factor and it will heal you all the way up to 100% while it deals damage. For your second constellation, this one isn't as good. It's basically just more damage to your skill. As you can see, when you press it, it increases the damage by 3.3%. And when you hold it, you gain 3.3% every 0.5 seconds you're in it. So it's just a nice boost in damage. It's not her best constellation, but you know, more damage. For constellation 3 and 5, both level your talents. 3 leveling your burst is actually really good. Uh, and then 5 levels your skill. Her constellation 4 is really nice if you need some energy. 1.2 energy every time you swirl, which can happen every two seconds can be really good especially if you're like in your ball form and you're rolling around or from your burst swirling enemies her sixth constellation is actually really good and it highly encourages you to build full elemental mastery basically what this does is your daruma will basically start scaling off of elemental mastery which is absolutely huge because it increases your healing and your damage as you can see for every single point of elemental mastery your sayu has you not only increase the damage dealt of your daruma by 0.2 percent attack for a maximum of 400 percent but you also increase how much healing he does, so the HP restored by 3 for every point of Elemental Mastery for a 
maximum of 6,000. And so overall, her constellations are really good. I like one, six, uh, and four is pretty convenient too. But I would say constellation six is a big spike, and constellation one is just a really good C1 that you can get, be happy with, and then you'll constantly heal and deal damage all the way up to full HP. So now we're going to talk about Sayu's team comps, and I want to start by saying that she's a very unique character who has different playstyles. So I'll try to cover all of that right here. But also, she has a lot of potential, even in ways that we might not have discovered yet or with future characters, because her kid is so unique. And so I believe that there might be some team comps that we haven't discovered yet, or if there's anything new that I want to add for Sayu's teams, it will obviously be in a pinned comment, so be sure to check that. With that being said, let's talk about Sayu's teams. So there are actually two ways to play her. You can use her specifically for her skill and build a team around her, or you can just use her as an Anemo healer, sort of like a Jean, but four star, where she can fit similar team comps to Jean. So let's, so let's talk about both those playstyles. First of all, for a team that revolves around her, one like this one, which I'll show in the showcase later, is a very good example. Running Sayu with Shangling allows you to not only swirl Pyro, proc the Verdescent Venor effect and enable your Shangling to deal more damage, but you can also spin alongside the Pyronado, even going the other direction of it, so counterclockwise, to actually make your Pyronado hit the enemy more than it otherwise would. So this is a team comp I really like, and the inclusion of Zhongli is mainly to petrify enemies, uh, especially in the current Abyss, because they run around everywhere if you don't, and for the shield that gives you more damage. Other characters that pair well with Sayu can be someone like Kaya, whose icicles will swirl around you, and someone like Fischl can be really good too. Fischl will not only constantly apply Electro to enemies, and proc reactions, but will also allow your Sayu to sort of swirl that Electro and maybe infuse her own skill with that Electro, making them a pretty good pair together. A character like Barbara can infuse your Sayu with Hydro through her elemental skill, but with my testing, I found this to be very inconsistent, and so I don't like it too much. And so I find that overall, Sayu's biggest uh, synergy is definitely Shangling with the Pyronado. Other than Shangling teams, though, I believe Sayu can play a role as a sort of four star Jean or a replacement for Jean in elemental team comps where you want a healer who can can also swirl enemies and proc the Verdescent Venator set. In this team, for example, Deluke and Sing Chu will be vaporizing, and then Sayu will be able to swirl Pyro and or Hydro and just be a passive healer. In team comps like this, or in more quote-unquote standard teams where you're running any elemental DPS and you just want someone to swirl the element, Sayu isn't going to be spinning around the whole time. She'll just be using her skill in that sort of short hold that I showed you guys earlier to just swirl, deal some damage, and heal your team. And so because of that, she is very flexible and can fit many different teams. Basically, any team where Jean could fit, Sayu can be used as a replacement, and so she is pretty flexible in that regard, so I can't really cover every single team in this video. Now, I also wanted to answer the question of how good Sayu is with Xiao, and basically she's not as good of a battery as some of the other Nemo units, like Sucrose, who will give you more particles and Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, or Venti, who will give you much more damage, but she can, once again, be a replacement to Jean, who gives Nemo particles and also heals you. Overall, though, Sayu is very flexible in many teams, even like this Yoimiya comp. Once again, if you need someone to swirl Pyro or be your sort of Viridescent healer, a character like Sayu can easily take the healer role and can do that in many different teams. She's also tons of fun to play in comps like the one with Shang Ling, where she can constantly spin around, enabling your team to deal more damage. All right, so now I'm going to get into a showcase. Just doing a floor 12 clear with Sayu. I wasn't sure if I was going to do a showcase or not in this video because she is a support character. So obviously my DPS characters are going to be the ones doing the most damage, right? But it will be a Sayu showcase in a comp that uh, utilizes her to the best of its ability. With her elemental skill, right, constantly rolling around, it's actually going to be a Shangling team. I'm going to pair her with Shangling and Bennett. So I have Shangling's Pyronado constantly roll around her while she swirls and enables it. If you're wondering what my Sayu is on, she's on a four piece for Destin Venator with full elemental mastery on every piece, a level 50 Favonius Greatsword, because I don't have the mats to level it up, for a total of 818 elemental mastery. With that being said, I had tons of fun recording this showcase because Sayu is super fun to play, so I hope you enjoy watching it.
So yeah, overall, I really like Sayu. She's one of the most fun characters that I've honestly ever played and I really enjoy just running around with her and I think she has a lot of potential as a sort of four star gene who has much more accessible constellations and some amazing ones right like her constellation one is so good that I really just like this character and believe she's very versatile and has a lot of potential. I really hope this guide was helpful. I'm actually recording this outro on my birthday because I forgot to make an outro so I'm going to edit this and then hopefully do something special uh, maybe on Twitch so if, so if you're interested be sure to follow my Twitch link in the description but with that being said if you guys have any questions or anything be sure to leave them in the comments because I do read most of them. Feel free to join the discord and subscribe if you're new because it means a lot and you'll be updated whenever I upload something new. And with that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. We're spinning so fast they can't keep up. Like how can they hit what they don't see?